You came on about a year ago, mm. and I've got to be honest with you, you look great, you were in terrific form, mm. and I felt so confident mm. that you'd really turned a corner. And yet, since then, it's been a really difficult year for you. Yeah, I haven't had the best years, to be fair. You know, I was doing really well when we spoke the last time I was here. And then, obviously, G, who had obviously mental problems. But, you know, to get sectioned, you have to, uh, it's a shame, really, because you have to either want to kill someone or you want to kill James or yourself. And he wasn't in a good way. Since then, uh, I've had a terrible year. You know, I keep having these old blips and that, and I don't really want to, you know. Um, and then I have these venues on. And then, like the drinks got the better bits, and I missed the venues. And then I can go indoors and shut the door and turn the mobile off where Eamon, Terry and Frieda from A1 Sport and Speaks, they get all the grief, you know, and the stick. Well, and it's not fair on them. Paul, what is the, what's the toughest thing about being Paul Gascoigne these days? Well, I don't know. I don't know why the press is still following us, you know. The, the age I'm at, and I don't play football any, anymore, and I don't look like Brad Pitt. I mean, he's in a bad way anyway, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point. He's been very open, hasn't yeah, he, about yes. drinking and, and drugs, mm, and you look going at, into therapy. You look at um, the Lebanon player, what's his name, just been saying. Aaron Lennon, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's got everything. He's got a wife, kid, lovely house. Sometimes I, I'm in a good mood and that. And then all of a sudden I wake up and I've got a bottle of gin next to us. Mm. And I think, where did that come from? And that, the tools I was learning from when I went to treatment, um, it's good coming to you because it saves us 15,000 in the rehab. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, what people, when, when you come on, it divides opinion. A lot of people say, great to see you, and we wish him so much. Yeah. Well. Other people say, well, why doesn't he help himself? Which is what people say to addicts. Yeah, I mean, sometimes when you have these tough times and people say, you know, it's good to say you're doing well in that, but they don't know what's happening internally. And, you know, instead of me, like, sharing it, like I am with you now, I uh, sort of block it out and me who gets a better us. Um, my front gets a better us. I think I'm better than alcohol. I think I can beat it, and that's, that's the problem, you know? And I call it stinking thinking, and it's not good. And there's a lot of people out there who have got everything, but inside, you know, they don't, they don't share it as much. Mm -hmm. um, and I think with this thing, with the mental health thing, I mean, lucky enough, I, I never had any mental problems, because I'm mental anyway. Um, <laughs> but no, it, I think it needs to be more done, because it, and I think it's, it's, especially with the guys, it's a macho thing. Yeah. You know, they think, no, I'm not doing this because no one like us, or, you know, my ego's getting battered. And mm -hmm. with me, sometimes, I need my ego to be battered and pushed mm -hmm. down, you know, and squashed. And that's the only way of going forward, you know, do by you talking about it. Do you think you are most at risk of turning back to alcohol when you're in a low time, when, when things are hard, or when you're more confident and you feel like you're on top yeah, of it? Yeah, when I, this is the time I've got to be really careful when I'm feeling good. You know, I'm starting to feel good about myself again. You know, I'm, I'm down, but I'm not out. Mm -hmm. um, and that'd be good to you. Whatever, you know, I have to tell myself, when I'm having a good day, is make the most of it, because I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mm -hmm. And when I'm having a bad day, is get through it. And what I do is really, when I'm having a bad day, I do the wrong things. I turn my phone off and I lock myself indoors. Mm -hmm. And that's not the... That's you have these idiots come round trying to thieve off you, yeah. so you the injury to your hand. Well... The police come round and said, be careful, there's a couple of guys going round robbing houses. And I said, you're too late, they, they stole three bikes. And um, the, the guys decided to come back the next night, and I clocked them. Mm -hmm. So I, I went down there, obviously protecting my stuff, then that was in storage, and I did what I had to do, and I think I'd come up for it. <laughs> is is your yeah. hand OK? Yeah, it's all right. I just broke a couple of bones in the, in the little finger, which is mm -hmm. sorted out. You're about to turn 50. No, I don't tell anyone. That's more, <laughs> that's more, that's more Botox now. How do you feel about turning 50, Paul? I don't mind. You know, I, I, like I said, you know, I've had a great... I've had a good, a good life and I've had my ups and downs. Just this year hasn't been the best. Um, it's probably the worst year ever. So hopefully 50 I'll turn a good point. And, uh, but I'm working on things just regards to myself. I'm writing down the pros and cons, what's good for me, what's not bad, mm -hmm. what's not good for me, you know, and that's important. And just the tools I learned when I had, had been in treatment. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, this time I didn't go into treatment, I did cold turkey. That was horrific. Mm -hmm. Not very nice. There's a big uh, party coming up for Tottenham. They're leaving White Hart Lane and having it all redone. They've invited all the old players. Mm -hmm. They invited you, but you're not going to go. Why, no, I'm that? leaving it. Um, uh, just because I'm like, I'm trying to get well again, which I'm doing really well. And I just think at the moment it's just best I focus on me staying well. Because then, you know, there's been lots of Tottenham games I can go to, mm. you know, and obviously I know it's gonna, probably going to be a big party bash for them. Good luck to the guys that are going to there. Mm. Yeah. But for me, at the moment, it's just concentrating, getting well, staying well, you know. And, mm. uh, you know, the, the thing with G, I've never, like, 
I've never actually talked about it as much mm. because you know I got him a cheap and I was close to him and I was really upset at the fact that they didn't section him. You know, um, I mean, yeah. Dad sectioned me once for 11 years, but that was about 16 years ago, and that was the best thing he ever did. And do you think, if, and do you think, if he had been sectioned, your nephew, he might still be alive? Yeah, definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. He just didn't get the help he needed. No, and he tried, he tried, and he tried, and they wouldn't do it because, you know, that you see, you've got to be a danger to another person when to kill someone or yourself. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, he did, he did it himself. And what was so sad that the fact that he ordered these pills on the internet. Yeah. Mm. You know, just so young just made kids. it easy for him to do. Yeah, this. just order him, come in the post, and then obviously took, went to his girlfriend's, and then he never woke up.